हेलो दिस इज प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर दीपिका श्रीवास्तव फ्रॉम द इंग्लिश डिपार्टमेंट टूडेज लेक्चर इज फॉर एम ए स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ द फोर्थ सेमेस्टर एंड माई टॉपिक इज आधे अधूरे दिस इज अ प्ले इन टू एक्ट्स रिटन बाय द रिनाउंड हिंदी राइटर मोहन राकेश आई रिपीट a play in two acts by mohan rakesh now we don't have to know much about the hindi uh, version but here we are doing and reading the english translation and the english version of this play is called halfway house halfway house and this was translated in english by bindu batra and it had an introduction by rajend nath right now before i start my analysis of this play halfway house let me briefly tell you about mohan rakesh his name was the full name was madan mohan guglani madan mohan guglani and he was born in 1925 in amritsar and he died in 1972 in delhi so the entire career was for a few years only because he died at the young age of 46 years now uh he was one of the pioneers of the nai kahani literary movement nai kahani literary movement of hindi literature in the 1950s and he uh, began his career as an ordinary postman though he had done his masters in hindi as well as in english from punjab university but unfortunately he could not get any proper job and he started off as the ordinary postman he changed from one career to another career and settled down switched on to a writing career full time writing career he started off as right he started off as a writer of short stories in hindi and the first collection was probably ne badal which was very popular which was very well appreciated and it was liked by all and sundry but anyway he was known for his plays rather than for anything else and his play आसार के एक दिन आसार के एक दिन विच ट्रांसलेटेड इन टू इंग्लिश इज वन डे इन मानसून दिस वॉज पब्लिश इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी एट एंड इट वॉज वाइडली एप्रिशिएटेड दस बिगैन हिज करियर एज अ प्ले राइटर एंड देन केम आधे अधूरे which was published in 1968 this is the play in two acts translated in english by bindu batra as halfway house which we are going to discuss today now he wrote on contemporary real life characters and the no, uh, the language he used was also the language used by common people and it was not exalted it was not uh, very sanskritized it was the ordinary hindu language spoken by the common gentry he was also by the way a member of the indian peoples theater association ipta and was also a member of the national school of drama 
just like other important dramatists from all over the country. Let me mention a few names here. One was Girish Karnad, the Kannada uh, writer. The other was Vijay Tindilkar from Maharashtra who wrote Marathi plays. And the other was Badal Sarkar who wrote in Bengali, Bangla writer from Bengal. Now, Adhi Adhure is Mohan Rakesh's second play. And here he describes contemporary relations of the modern 20th century India trying to do away with colonial vestiges. What are colonial vestiges? The leftovers of the colonial era. In this new India of the 20th century, women were an important pillar of society and they wanted to rid themselves of the image of the women of medieval ages. Now this Adhi Adhure or halfway house is a quest of completeness. Quest of completeness. What does Adhi mean? Half. And what is Adhura? Incomplete. So the whole thing, the whole play is, is based on incomplete sentences, on incomplete family relations and everything is incomplete Adhe Adhure. Now, before I go into discussing the main themes of this play, let me briefly introduce you with the characters or the actors uh, of this drama. The first is Savitri. She is the protagonist as well as the heroine of Adhe Adhure. The next is Mahindranath, her good-for-nothing husband, useless, aggressive, violent and jobless. So this in itself gives you a picture of how horrid he is going to be in the play and especially while treating his wife. Then come the children who are equally useless and good for nothing. The first one is a son by the name of Ashok, equally good for nothing son who has no aim in life, who is also jobless like his father and who wiles away his time in nothingness. Then we come to the daughters who are equally obnoxious, if I may say so. The first one is the eldest daughter by the name of Bini. She is an exact replica of her mother, Savitri, and she also, you know, is a failed wife, and a woman who is not having cordial relations with her husband. That is Bini. And the second daughter is Kini. She is a rebellious teenager, cheeky, ill-mannered, stubborn and not doing anything in life except fighting and fighting and fighting. So I repeat, these are the five major characters of the drama, of this play, the protagonist, the lady heroine, the most important character, Savitri. Now you see, before I go further, let me tell you that Savitri is the iconic woman of our great epics and this lady went all the way and implored, besieged Yama, the god of death, to bring her dead husband back to life. The name of the husband was Satyavan. And she succeeds also. She was one Savitri. Here is another Savitri, incidentally, who is not at all matching with the earlier iconic figure of Savitri. Though she is also trying her best to work for the family, to work for the family's income, towards the betterment of society, but she is mostly 
devoting all her efforts on her own betterment. That is the difference. And the husband Mahendra Nath, though he is alive, but he is as good as not being on the scene because he is not only useless, good for nothing, violent, aggressive, but he is a wife beater as well. Now, before I go further into the story of this play, let me tell you that in the 20th century, there was a marked change in the image of women. The women wanted to be independent. They wanted to be career oriented, not just homemakers and housewives. And they wanted to step outside the four walls of the home and work for themselves and be an important part of society. This is what Savitri of Adhe Adhure also tries to do. And whether she is successful or whether she is a failure, it is for you, the readers, to decide. In her efforts to be a better person and to be a successful woman, she has numerous affairs or flings with influential men who come into contact with her. Now we come to the other characters of this play. The first one is Singhania. The second is Jagmohan who is Savitri's friend and the third is Juneja who is Mahendnath childhood friend. Now instead, though they have a name for themselves, but you know, they are, they are called the second person, the third person, the fourth person, because they are not important people. They are just characters who are filling in the void of Savitri's life. And they are generic, common people. And may I tell you one thing here, that in the play, when uh, the producers or the directors were um, choosing their actors, they had one male actor to fill in the roles of all these men. So you can imagine what uh, importance they have in the play. The play revolves only and only on Savitri's shoulders. Now, though she is the female protagonist, Savitri, she is a hardworking woman who is wanting the best for her family. We cannot blame her for her efforts. And she is the caretaker, the homemaker, without any emotional or financial support from anyone. In the course of the first act, we have incomplete dialogues. And that is why the play is Adhe Adhure. Incompleteness is the hallmark of this play. She moves from one man to another man. And then all men are the same is what Mohan Rakesh is saying. They cannot be a substitute for the husband. And this play therefore flirts with modernity. Why? Because the modern woman, she can go to any extent to achieve success. This is what is depicted here and she is in stark contrast with the earlier heroines of you can say drama or novels who would never dare to do things which she is doing. And in the bargain she is exploited by her husband who uses all her financial resources not only that, who does nothing and who beats her, tears her clothes. So who is going to tolerate such a husband? Now many people say that this play is anti-woman. But I think that she is like a Greek tragedy heroine. Because she is doing everything for the family. And she says that why have I married? I have married for stability. I have married for financial support. I have married for compatibility, for companionship. 
if I have to do everything, I could have done it without being married. In the 20th century, the women always bear the brunt. They bear the brunt of the husbands. They bear, bear the brunt of the bosses. They bear the brunt of the children it's, uh, here, as in this novel. All three children are blaming her for one thing or the other. And the younger daughter, she is so outspoken. She answers back and she is not at all uh, having any communication with the father or the mother. The elder daughter also says that the house is like a zoo. Imagine saying that for a mother who has given up everything for the comforts of the children. She wants to erase everything she witnessed in the home and move forward. This is Bini. And she elopes, my God, with one of her mother's ex-lover, Manoj. Not only that, she does not have a comfortable life even in this second marriage, the first marriage is between Savitri and Mahendranath and the second marriage is the marriage which is shown here between Manoj and the daughter Bini. This is equally bad and it has no sense of belonging. It is also, you know, everybody is searching for some hope, for some succor, for some companionship and ultimately she comes back to her mother's home. Now, they say that critics of Adhi Adure say that the woman, especially Savitri, who is the heroine, she has to be blamed for everything. But I don't think so. I mean, she did her best to improve the condition of the home and why should she take all the blame when all the characters are Adhi, all the characters are Adhure. Now, uh, I think that it is like an absurd play which shows that humans live in a purposeless state of mind. They are running after something which they will never attain. She is running after success which she knows she will never get, Savitri. And this play also emphasizes the theory of existentialism of individuals who are free and responsible for their own individual acts of will. She is responsible. Savitri is responsible for whatever she does. Now when we take up Mahendranath, I have already given you a brief introduction about him. His uh, faceless and uh, faceless and uh, unimportant uh, characterization is there for us to see how an unemployed man of the family who should be the head of the family but he has been you know uh, kept in the backside because he does not have any finances i think today this is enough and tomorrow or day after i'll continue with this uh, discussion on adhe adhure Thank you friends. Before I end, I request you to read Adhe Adhure in English as well as in Hindi. Thanks.